Hi and welcome. Today we're going to discuss a little bit on how to use or to define accessibility in any location. The um, the classic the classic definition that we're going to use is the well the old gravity model, the potential accessibility model of Hansen from 1959. If you Google Hansen 1959, you'll find literally thousands of of, of citations of this kind of classic accessibility piece of literature. It assumes, as you can see on the on the on the Word document here, that we've got accessibility in, in, in any location I, which is where I sits, where anyone sits, any part of any kind of location of origin, and that is the sum of some of all the opportunities. Could be jobs, could be recreational activities, could be anything really. Um, all the opportunities located at location J. Let's, for the sake of the argument, mean that location I and J all are municipalities. But the origin then would be one municipality and the destination would be every municipality, including the origin. Because whenever you're looking for a job, of course, you would look for the jobs in the same location as well. So that means that this J, sum of J over J, also includes I, which is the, the origin of the location. As we can see here, <coughs> we also have a generic function looking into the fact that we've got a function of cost between any location i and j. This is what it means, the function of cost. So we've got an idea that there's a distance decay. So more distant jobs are less interesting than more close ones. This is kind of a, well, the golden role of geography, world of toddler again, that more distant things are, and stuff like that. So, we prioritize the jobs that are closer and what we do in this case if we think of them as jobs is that we sum up the total amount of job potentially available for the stock of people living at any location i and if we assume that we are talking about municipalities and i've given you an example we will use the 290 municipalities in sweden so we'll have a, a kind of a large array of, of municipalities where all the relationship between all the 290 municipalities to all other 290 municipalities will be sort of taken under control. So this is what we're going to do. Potential accessibility is today's lesson. This is what the data set looks like. Uh, first of all, let me see if we can take away a few of the things that we could start including. Yes, there we go. The, uh, the residential municipality is what we're taking values from 2008. It really doesn't matter what year it is. Now it's 2018, it could well be any kind of year. And we could see all these municipalities are coded. So 114 is one municipality, and this is the destination being the same, but in, in all the other cases here, the destination is someone else. And we scroll down, in 290 cases, we will start getting to new municipalities and so, so forth and so forth. This is hardly sort of surprising. It is a table that has got all the combinations possible. So, origin, destination. We also got the flow, which is the observed flow of commuters. So these these are the numbers of commuters that actually flow, well, in this case, within the municipalities. And the, the uh, mean distance for these individuals has been observed to be 1,345 minutes within the municipalities. And for the other ones, it has been observed to be 9,219 meters between these two municipalities. That seems they are pretty close, closely located. So we got the distance between all, and we got the jobs in each of the municipalities. So this is the total amount of jobs in municipality 114. This is the total amount of jobs in municipality 115. And this is the total amount of population in location I, again, here, which is the residential municipality being 114. So as long as we've got 114 here, the number will be the same. We scroll down we'll see this logic keeps and but they've got new numbers and new population numbers so this is the information we need now let's look to the assumptions first of all we we will go to compute the access to opportunities that are determined by the distance decay so well we got a distance decay two the friction however unlikely this is a modeling game right this is a learning experience is the same for all our origins. So the distance decay, how, how people are affected by distance is assumed to be the similar regardless of what municipality you, you start from. 
the friction parameter value that determines this distance decay can be estimated using regressions or mathematical formulations. And we'll, so we'll, we'll look into both. And fourth, decay follows a in, in both these cases negative exponential or power function. You can in fact define even more uh, functions because decay could be in any kind of a format but it's clearly typical and especially common there are also papers showing it that for commuting exponential function is kind of the best for migration and for longer distance moves power function is better but these are clearly the two most common functions of of, of decay when we're looking into population mathematics and statistics right so in order to find the decay parameters using a regression We've got, we need to find for the negative exponential and, and y variable and an x variable. And the y variable in this case, this one, is being expressed as the log flow. So the log of the flow, this is the flow, so the log of that number, divided by the sum of all jobs times the sum of the entire population in the, in the location or destination. So the log of this and these ones multiplied. The x variable would be the distance between i and j. And that's already available in this table. And the beta would mean the beta coefficient for the distance. Well, the in, in other words, what the uh, the beta from the regression suggests, what's the coefficient value. For the negative power function, instead of using sort of the distance, as we do for the x, we are using a log distance. And that would be the modeling distance to determine the decay value. We'll keep it at that. We'll show the mathematical uh, variations very soon, but this is where we'll start. And in order to do that, I'm going to reduce the size of these ones. And let me see if we can go to the going to a uh, an SPSS window. I'm not saying SPSS is pref preferably better than anything else any kind of statistical software would do but this is kind of a handy way of dealing with it so that's why we are dealing with this statistical software and I fancy statistic software over Excel in terms of doing regressions. So what we're going to do is follow the the idea we had at the beginning which was that we had we had one uh, let me see if I can reduce the size of this we wanted to define the y variable and the x variable and the y variable was the uh, the flow, the log flow, divided by the multiplied sum of jobs and individuals. So that variable is already created, as we can see here. That's the value. Uh, and this is the independent variable. And that's in this case, for the negative exponential function, the distance, in this case in meters. And that's going to affect the outcome, because if we use kilometers, we're going to have another value. So it's, it's important to keep sort of the unit uh, close close at hand. So we're using meter distance and when I now press OK we're going to get a regression result there you go very quickly in fact we, we could take a look at the ask where value and these kinds of things it seems to suggest or approximately a quarter of the variation in the data set but the most important thing is this value here you can see it's the t-value is okay, minus 101, which is strong by all standards and very significant and all. Uh, but if we copy these, let me see if I can get the value copied. We go to the Excel document. Let me see if we can get to the Excel document in any quick way. Um, then we know that the the beta value could be expressed as this one. Let me see if I can get it. Formwood cells, so we rather than the scientific values, in fact, also see uh, the value itself. So this is the suggested beta coefficient for distance that we can use to determine distance decay when it comes to meters. If we go for the um, for the uh, for the power function. We would instead use, let me see, that's not the one I want to use. We want to use the log distance. So I go back to the formulation. We've got the log distance there, and I would use and return to regression. 
linear. Instead of having the meter distance, I go for the log distance. I redo the regression and I end up with a new kind of result which is much easier to, to copy this time because it's minus 1.315. It's a better number than the other one. So I go back to the Excel and I copy and paste this. In the next phase, in the next section, we are going to look for the mathematical definitions of how to use, uh, how to, to specify distance decay, and then we are going to do the calculations and see if we are getting any differences. So hang on and hang tuned, and we'll be soon back.